Uh, second, uh, uh, right now I'll post uh, the the the, um, uh, the link to um, uh, to the Google Class uh, uh, to uh, to Google Forms uh, that uh, contains just well, a very simple. Um, uh, a table, uh, uh, we need to collect your names, your group numbers. Uh, so please copy the link that I just well posted uh, in our group chat. Uh, we'll play, uh, paste it in your browser and uh, uh, fill down the attendance. So we need to know all your names and, and all your, your group numbers. Now that will be important, and after the class, that uh, that link will be closed. You'll be unable uh, to use it anymore. Uh, excuse me, teacher. Yes. Hello. Yes, yes Maya. Maya. Yes, good day. Uh, I have a question. And do we have to write for the previous classes also our attendance, or just for today? Uh, uh, video. You mean? Uh, uh, should you switch on your camera uh, for the class? Yes, it should. It will, be, it will be always as in our real class. You should not will hide somewhere else. You should uh, uh, will be well during the class physically in the room. Uh, now you may be somewhere else, but well, we need to, uh, to have some some kind of control. Um, therefore, we should be able to see that actually you are. Well, sitting in front of your PC, your, your iPhone, your, your iPad, um, and uh, while well, mm, actually listening at least to me. Uh, therefore, yes, uh, uh, it's required, and uh, therefore I'll uh, insist that uh, you all will switch on your cameras. You, you have to switch off your microphones, uh, unless I will, I will arrange the discussion, or you'll have a well, question to me, or well, I have a question to you. Uh, but still, uh, uh, it's important uh, so that we'll be able to to modify your your attendance in front of your devices. So, Maya. Yes, Professor. Uh, did I answer your question? Mm, not really, because I asked you. You sent to, uh, to us a link to write our names and the date of. Yes. Um, the day, yes. And I wanted to ask you, should we write the previous class also, or just No, no, no. Uh, uh, only for today's class. Ah, okay, good. This was my answer, and... Uh, uh, yes, uh, only for today's class, and I think we'll, we'll try to, to use the same system for uh, uh, well, next classes, but not for previous classes. Okay, thank you very much. Hi, uh, teacher, I have a question, please. Yes? Uh, I am out now. Can I open my video when I got home? Because uh, I have to do something. I can hardly hear you. Uh, it's Safali. Yes, yes Safali. Can, can you please From, uh, repeat once again? Uh, I am out now because I do like some documents and this thing. Can I open this my, board, my uh, microphone until I got home? Then I will open my video. Okay, yeah, fine. It, it, it's fine. Okay, thank you. Uh, good. Okay. Uh, today's class will be devoted to auscultation of the heart. And uh, um, from that point of view, I tried to arrange some kind of the, the um, uh, recording that uh, I plan to switch uh, on and, and uh, will play it for you. But unfortunately, the same trick uh, did not work with, with my Russian group that they just well finished. Um, half an hour ago, so I'll try to do that. And uh, if there will be no, uh, if there will be no sound, uh, if you'll be able to hear anything, uh, please will text me or, or will switch on your microphone and then type it to me. So I'll be able to understand that uh, will it be of any use, or, or maybe we'll just will download the audio files to the maybe Google Class. Or maybe portal, and uh, that will be all for. Now. Sorry, it's fine. The, that's okay for you. I'm recording it as well. But the point is that I would like to play some records of the hot sounds and murmurs, and I'm not sure whether it will work or not.
Yes. Yes, yes. So we'll try to, to adjust the, the, the system of, of your marks because we're forced to shift from Google Class uh, to the portal of university. Uh, so we'll try to collect all information about your uh, answers, about your responses uh, at the um, Google Class and we'll try well, to shift them or deliver some, 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 somehow to your dean's office. Um, anyhow, uh, well, we need to shift to the uh, platform of the, the web page of university. Excuse me. But yes, I received your, your marks, your responses, yes. Yes, Chabels? Uh, yes, um, I have three small questions. Um, the first, um, it's written in the PDF form in persistent edema, the skin becomes rigid and loses yes. elasticity. Um, why? Why does it become rigid? Uh, the point is that that is the, the result of some tropical changes. Uh, uh, there may be two types of, of the changes that we were talking about in the previous class. Uh, first uh, is uh, a decreased blood supply, the, the matter of arteries, when there will be less, uh, well, so to say, delivery of blood to some certain well, part of the body or skin. Uh, there will be ischemic changes, uh, there will be dystrophy. Uh, similar changes, but uh, uh, combined to higher blood pressure because there will be impaired return of the blood away from the affected area, will happen in the case of block of veins. In that case, patient will develop edema first, and that will be the acute uh, symptom and sign uh, that will be obvious. But sometimes we may see that patient uh, uh, at the end stage of the, the venous issues. It may be, well, one year, it may be 10 years, it may be decades uh, after patient had acute situation with his obvious edema. Mm, and you may see that uh, the, the, the ankles, their feet are, will have some strange dark coloration. That's due to well, inability of, of blood vessels to perfuse normally the skin on one hand and the second point is that the patient may have loss of abscesses into subcutaneous fat and the inter skin itself and they'll stain the skin will into darker color even more uh, in comparison just to, to, to dystrophy so mm -hmm. therefore if you see a, a guy it, it may be well typically a patient will stand a lot of time during his or her life um, uh, with with uh, um, uh, some strange dark uh, well, uh, well darker color of, of, of uh, especially a lower third lower half of the ankles most likely due to uh, venous failure due, due to impaired outflow of venous blood. Thank you. Well. Um, Can everybody hear me? Because well, uh, there is a uh, text yeah, from. Yeah, we can hear you clearly. Sorry, yes, you can so hear me. Yes, we can hear you. Yes, Good, so. fine. I think it's unmuted. Uh, good, fine. Uh, uh, if there'll be any other issues, don't hesitate well, to text me or just to switch on your microphone and tell me uh, so that we'll not study in, in vain. Uh, good. Okay. Um, so once again, uh, uh, my uh, well, you may consider that my personal request, request of early teachers, request of the dean's office, but uh, use our web page of university. It's a new one. Uh, the address starts not from do but from dl dl dot section of dot room. Please use it because in that way uh, our well officers will be able to control us as teachers and control you as our students, and they wish to control everything. So please do this, uh, uh, well, uh, use not link that I'll post in the Google class. Once again, I would like to warn everybody that I think from next class, I'll start posting the links only in the uh, web page. Mm, definitely the Google class will still be alive and you will use it as, as, as a kind of uh, the, the feedback. Mm, I'll still use it as a kind of well, well, supplementary uh, source of information. Um, but the basic will be only the internet web page. 
if there are any difficulties text me well call me well, well write me a letter i'll try to uh, uh, to deal with that by the way don't forget that i'm saving the chat and if there will be uh, uh, any issues uh, uh, during the class you may just well text me and if you'll not answer during the class i'll read all your messages after the class good uh, okay now we are uh, shifting to uh, today's topic uh, today's topic will be the, i think the half of the auscultation of the heart will uh, discuss today uh, mostly uh, mostly hard sounds and uh, um, next class I think it will be well as we planned the previous week at the 1 p.m. on Saturday um, that class will be devoted to uh, uh, to murmurs of the heart and uh, examination of great veins that we uh, were unable to discuss at the, the, the previous class so next topic will be heart murmurs and examination of great veins, first of all, jugular venous pulse. Good. Well, now uh, let's start discussing uh, auscultation, and we need to start, as usual, from repetition of, of the basics, of the data that you should know from your normal physiology classes, uh, that uh, we have certain phases in cardiac activity, uh, and uh, uh, those phases definitely will uh, split all uh, uh, audible events like heart sounds and murmurs into diastolic and systolic. Uh, and therefore, we need to uh, discuss separately or more or less separately events that will happen in diastole. One ventricles will be, well, uh, at least more or less relaxed. Uh, and blood will again uh, almost passively, it's not quite true, uh, will flow from atria to ventricles. Uh, that will be uh, um, uh, terminated by atrial systole. Uh, and uh, uh, systole of ventricles, uh, uh, their contraction with the rapid elevation of pressure in the cavity of those ventricles, in um, uh, uh, great arteries, that is aorta and pulmonary artery. Uh, and there'll be a lot of events related to contraction itself and uh, events just during the well, ejection of the blood during the emptying of ventricles uh, into great arteries. Uh, good. Well, um, how, it will, uh, how it will all happen and how... Uh, sorry. Um... Uh, um, what will happen at the very end of diastole? Please pay attention to the level of pressure. We uh, just will took as an example, uh, left cases of the heart, we're talking about left ventricle and left atrium. Presuming that at the right cases of the heart, they'll be just same, but at the level of the somewhat lower pressure. Uh, and please pay attention that uh, the pressure curves for, for uh, left atrium and for the left ventricle are very, very close. So therefore, there is a very slow pressure gradient across, well, in the left side, mitral valve. And therefore, there will be quite smooth flow of the blood that will get uh, from uh, uh, atrium to ventricle. Uh, quite soft, and typically in that case, we'll, have, uh, uh, we'll hear no uh, uh, murmurs, no sounds. Uh, for uh, the end of ventricular diastole to be finalized by atrial contraction, atrial systole, uh, that will definitely uh, raise the pressure in the atrium. Uh, well, consecutively, it will be increase in the pressure in the left ventricle. But please, again, pay attention that there is almost uh, no difference, very, very low pressure gradient uh, between those two curves. Again, quite smooth flow of blood, no significant pressure that will be created over the jet of blood uh, that will be um, well flowing from one cavity to another. Then, uh, then ventricles will start to contract. Uh, what will happen? First of all, uh, ventricles are very potent muscle, very strong muscle, much stronger than atria. Therefore, they can create 
very high pressure just uh, at once uh, and um, in that case uh, uh, in the blink of your eye uh, that there will be an opposite situation when ventricular pressure will exceed atrial pressure i think uh, well i'll try to draw a little bit here um, uh, so at that moment uh, the, the, the pressure in the ventricle will be over, will be higher than the pressure in the atrium. And it means that blood will try to escape. It will try to escape backward uh, from ventricle uh, uh, into atrium, where it was receiving the blood uh, from just a moment ago. So um, uh, ventricles will start uh, to contract uh, and blood will try to escape back that escape backward movement will shut the cusps of the mitral valve and that will create our first uh, sound that we'll discuss now well after atrial systole uh, there will be at the very beginning of uh, ventricular uh, contraction first um, well actually it will be after atrial systole second um, important component that will be the shutting of the AV valve um good that's important we need to keep that in our mind and uh, let's go further mm, uh, what will happen uh, afterwards ventricle will significantly increase uh, its pressure uh, um, pressure will go higher very very rapidly and once it will exceed pressure in uh, aorta that will be the uh, diastolic blood pressure in a patient uh, at that moment uh, aortic valve will open and blood will start flowing from the ventricle uh, into aorta. Again, that's obvious, and uh, that will create another component of uh, uh, the first well, systolic cardiac sound. Uh, uh, once uh, cusps of aortic valve will become open now, and blood will be flowing from the, let's say, left ventricle into aorta, uh, there will be vibration of the walls of aorta that will receive a new portion of blood. Uh, that will be the vascular component of the first cardiac sound. So once again, let's uh, summarize what, what did you mention for today. Um, uh, first was the atrial contraction, event that will just precede contraction of ventricles, first. Second, uh, on certain ventricular contraction, shutting of the, um, of the AV valve, that will be second event. And the uh, um, next event that you mentioned is the opening of aortic valve and development of uh, um, a vascular component or the first heart sound. Uh, well, that will be the, the uh, important components of S1, but uh, that's not all. I think we missed something. And now there will be a question to all of you. Actually, what uh, 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 the, another component, the last component is missed in the scheme, uh, uh, you may just will describe it in terms of uh, auscultation, the, the component of S1, or you may well answer me, you may respond for the terms of uh, normal physiology, because we lost one very important phase in cardiac activity. Uh, uh, the, the Isometric phase. Of the phase. Uh, exactly, exactly. Um, uh, uh, that's correct. It's isometric contraction. Uh, what means isometric or isovolumetric, if you wish to? Mm, uh, it means that uh, there will be contraction of uh, um, uh, uh, or ventricle um, with a fixed volume. Blood is fluid. Blood is a uh, what? It's almost incompressible, and therefore, if uh, well, somebody, something, any device will will uh, try to compress. Um, uh, uh, water or well, water-based fluid that is blood. In that case, there will be a very rapid gain in pressure. That's what we have here. In between the moment of the shutting of the mitral valve and opening of the aortic valve. Uh, one uh, valve is already shut, another is not yet open. Uh, and therefore, first, that explains uh, why there will be such a dramatic rise, dramatic gain in the pressure uh, in, the, in the left ventricle. Uh, second, uh, that will be the explanation why 
uh, that uh, another component of the tumor state will be a third. Uh, if we try, he will um, um, to, to put them in chronological order uh, component and the vascular component will be the fourth. Uh, why that component is so important? That will be the vibration of the muscle of the ventricle itself. So that will be the attempt of the ventricle to create some extra pressure. Uh, uh, and because uh, AV valve is uh, closed and uh, aortic valve is not yet open, uh, in that case, pressure will go up so rapidly, so quickly. Uh, that is important and uh, uh, that's why in many cases the most dramatic uh, factor that will, will impact to the uh, intensity that the loudness of S1 uh, will be the muscular component. That will happen uh, sometimes in healthy people for instance if you just will uh, go upstairs several floors uh, you'll get high level of blood pressure you'll develop tachycardia. In that case shortening uh, uh, of diastoles will create uh, loud as one due to mostly mus uh, muscular component. Same may happen in many cardiac disease that we'll discuss a bit later today and maybe in our next lessons. Well, uh, what will happen next? Uh, uh, next, there will be ongoing emptying of the left ventricle and along with emptying, no matter that it will lose some amount of blood into aorta to eject it, uh, there will be continued in, in increase in the pressure. Pressure is still is going up. Uh, the pressure will reach its climax at the middle of uh, uh, systole and that will call systolic blood pressure. Uh, while uh, that was the uh, uh, diastolic blood pressure. Uh, and then again, the, the ventricle will continue emptying. It will continue giving some blood into aorta, uh, but pressure will go down. Pressure will decrease in the ventricle, this blue line, and uh, pressure will go down in aorta, that is dotted line. And uh, uh, in that case, when there will be uh, onset of relaxation of the ventricle, blood will try to escape back, backward. It will try to escape from uh, aorta, uh, that will be the aortic valve. Uh, it will try to escape back into left ventricle. And once it will uh, try to escape back, uh, it will uh, shut aortic valve. There will be vibrations of the cusp of the valve itself and vibrations of the adjacent portion of aorta. So from the point of view of physics, it's the same mechanism. It's the same single process where when blood is just about trying to flow from, from aorta backward to the left ventricle, uh, no subphases. But from the clinical point of view, we may have diseases of aorta and we may have diseases of aortic valve. And therefore, while more or less artificially, we separate these two components. And we are talking about uh, a valvular component and a vascular component uh, of uh, second heart sound. Good. Uh, good. Uh, well, uh, talking about uh, talking about um, uh, uh, next events. So, starting from the shutting of aortic valve, we are talking about uh, diastole. Shutting of aortic valve will give you your patient will give uh, a second heart sound, and then uh, uh, left ventricle will, will continue relaxing. Uh, after shutting of aortic valve. It will continue to relax until the pressure in the left ventricle will be under the pressure in the left atrium. Uh, but again, please pay attention to the difference. There's almost none uh, between the pressure in the ventricle in, uh, and uh, in the atrium in diastole. So almost zero pressure gradient, definitely. It's not true, it's not zero but uh, very, very small. Um, and by the way, I'll give uh, well, another question to you. You may text or you may just well uh, raise your hand or just will switch on your microphone um, and tell me uh, what will be the sound that will emerge typically in healthy patient uh, at the moment of the opening of the mitral valve? Anybody? Lab. Yes? Parameter? Lab. Uh, it's a lab sound. 
uh, it's uh, lab sound. Lab, lab, yes. Uh, yes, but it happens not in healthy people. Labdab so is not in healthy people, sir? No. No, a labdab is the sound of the presence of the opening snap. And opening snap is shown here in red uh, because it's extra sound, it's pathological sound. So normally there should be nothing. Uh, I should not hear anything indicating the moment of the opening of the mitral valve. Uh, uh, it should, should be, be no just an absolutely sound. silent event. No. Yes, David. Yeah, uh, there should be no sound only when it's uh, the mitral valve is uh, pushed by the blood and closed. There will be a sound. It's just exactly. like closing the door. Uh, uh, exactly. So only if there will be very high pressure uh, uh, in the cavity of the left atrium, uh, and uh, uh, the pressure here will go up. Uh, a pressure in left ventricle definitely will be normal, uh, but there will be very high pressure gradient uh, across mitral valve. Mm, uh, in that case, the opening of the mitral valve will not be smooth, it will be very sharp, like you have, for instance, uh, well, the draft in your flat, uh, uh, and uh, uh, the jet of air or jet of blood will rush uh, uh, after very, uh, under very, very strong pressure. Only in that case, you will get opening snap. Normally, that event should, should be silent. Uh, uh, and we'll discuss later uh, why a patient may develop opening snap, what will be the significance of that. Uh, for now, please remember that is extra sound, it's pathological sound. In contrast to that, third cardiac sound may be normal sometimes. So sometimes it may be uh, a child, it may be a young adult uh, with, with third heart, heart sound, but Healthy adult patient should have no third cardiac sound. Mm, uh, third cardiac sound will develop at the moment of the rapid ventricular feeling. Sometimes uh, that phase is uh, uh, named passive rapid ventricular feeling. It's not quite true. Yes, on one hand, it's passive because it's not associated to contraction of the atria. Uh, but uh, it's not absolutely passive from the point of view of the ventricle. Uh, uh, it adapts itself, so I'll try well, to draw uh, something. Uh, it should grow bigger, bigger, and bigger, well, uh, along with the entering of the volume of the blood. Please pay attention that a ventricle receives higher volume of the blood. The volume of, in the ventricle uh, uh, goes up uh, during the, the whole diastole. But during the, the first half of, of the diastole, about that, uh, along with increase in, in, in the volume of the blood, pressure is going down. It means that uh, that is a, a controlled relaxation of the ventricle. And if there will be some kind of impairment uh, of regulation of uh, ventricular activity, or if there will be too high volume of the blood that will be received by the ventricle during the, 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 that phase, in that case, a uh, patient will get extra vibration at the, uh, at the beginning of diastole that will call third cardiac sound. Uh, well, uh, well, then, then ventricle will continue receiving blood, pressure will slightly increase, and uh, uh, at the moment of the atrial contraction, uh, the pressure will uh, increase even just a little more slightly. Uh, there will be a very, very mild elevation of the blood pressure, and uh, uh, that means that um, uh, that again, there will be quite smooth um, change in pressure gradient across mitral valve or across tricuspid valve. We'll talk about right carriers of the heart. Uh, so, uh, what about third cardiac sound? Uh, sorry, uh, fourth cardiac sound. Fourth cardiac sound, we already discussed when we we're talking about um, uh, atrial component or the S1. Normally, these sounds will merge together and there'll be one single S1 that will encompass first atrial component, second uh, valvular component, third muscular, very important component, muscular component, and vascular. Four components of uh, uh, S1, and first will be atrial. But if the systole of atria will be, become longer, if it will be separated from the other components of S1, 
uh, to be separated from the sagittal ventricles. In that case, we will we'll be able to hear separately uh, fourth cardiac sound in a patient uh, um, with, uh, for instance, overload of atria, or in the case of some block, or in the case of some issues of ventricle that will, will be unable to receive um, the last portion of blood from, from the atria. Good, well, uh, basically same, but from the point of view of echo CG, cardiac ultrasound, uh, that is the, the end diastole, left atrium, that the ultrasound probe is located somewhere across the heart, and uh, uh, you see smooth flow, but actually it's difficult to assess smoothness without Doppler charting, and Doppler color mode. Uh, 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 there is flow of blood from atrium to left ventricle. That is the, the end of diastole, and you may see that uh, the, the atrial walls become stiffer, more, more whitish due to their contraction. Uh, 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 it means uh, that uh, it's really end of diastole because it's systole of atria, of atrium. Um, so blood is flowing from atrium to ventricle. It will happen uh, at the very onset of, of systole. Please uh, look at the, the, the arrows, look at the state of aorta and aortic valve, it's still shut. Uh, and uh, at the mitral valve, that is the open mitral valve, that is the shot mitral valve blood tried to escape back from ventricle to uh, to atrium but it failed uh, mitral valve will be closed by that uh, attempt to escape backward um, uh, and uh, and uh, there is no opening of aortic valve yet, so we can think that that may be the phase of either metric or either volumetric uh, contraction. Then uh, onset of ejection means that there is the end of uh, uh, the, the S1, uh, onset of systole itself, uh, the onset of, of emptying of left ventricle into aorta. Aortic valve is already opened, and blood is flowing from ventricle into aorta. Uh, that is the systole itself. Good. Uh, well, well, well. Um, uh, we start our lecture from very uh, basic, basic for, from uh, very rudimentary things. Uh, from what is systole, what is diastole, and another very simple but very important point is how to differentiate S1 from S2. And now I'd like all of you to switch on your microphones. Mm, uh, and if you well read textbook, well you may just well tell me what you what you what you read, uh, what you read there. Uh, if not, just well try to use your common sense as usual. Uh, try me how should we differentiate uh, S1 from S2? Well, the question to you is to everybody. You may raise your hands uh, in the Zoom. You may just well, switch on your microphone and and uh, speak forth. Well. Anybody? Yes. Doctors? Okay. David? Lucas? Sir, say it according to physiology. I mean, um, I S1, happen. it occurs if mitral valve closed. Once again? Sorry, Kimia? Uh, I see. Uh, yes, I lose the sound. Yes. The first sound is uh, longer and louder than the second one. Ah, uh, that's true. So definitely we have some simple tricks, uh, uh, simple features, uh, simple markers. Uh, let, uh, like that, for, for instance, at the apex, we have loud S1 normally. At the base, there will be somewhat higher amplitude, somewhat louder S2 over the uh, S1, first. Uh, second, um, uh, uh, the duration of diastole normally in the normal heart rate will be uh, longer, significantly longer than duration of the system. It's also true. But the point is that we are not in our physiology class. Uh, we deal with, with the patient. We're dealing with the patient, and patient may have quite abnormal 
uh, cardiac activity. A uh, patient may have issues uh, with the uh, function of the heart and S1 may be not as loud where it should be loud uh, uh, or there may be changes in the intensity of S2 and definitely there may be changes in cardiac rate. And therefore, there may be a diastole S shot that it will be almost indistinguishable from a duration of the normal systole. Uh, therefore, uh, these maneuvers, these signs will work actually almost uh, in only healthy people or almost healthy people. Mm, uh, they're not reliable for patients with cardiac disease. For cardiac disease, actually, there is only one and the basic marker indicating that you are listening now to the S1. That is uh, uh, the um, elevation of pressure in carotid artery uh, uh, or positive uh, apex beat, positive apical pulsation. Uh, definitely most reliable will be presence of the uh, uh, positive pulse wave on, on the carotid artery. And later on, but I'll show you some PCG recordings, the phonocardiograms. Mm, uh, you'll see that in most of the cases, uh, the, the recording of the heart sounds will be accompanied either by the ECG. Mm, uh, uh, definitely, if you have, you, you have the ability to monitor patients, electrical cardiac activity, that, that's very fine. Uh, but if not, if you talk about physical examination, uh, then just will position your pounds of the patient carotid, uh, fill it, uh, and systole will, um, will just precede, uh, will almost coincide, will be just well, a uh, uh, well, portion of second earlier uh, to, um, uh, uh, to uh, development of the first cardiac sound. Uh, Sites of auscultation. Uh, first of all, please remember that in many cases we'll name uh, the sites, the standard or primary sites for auscultation because you may auscultate, well, any part of patient's chest. And sometimes you should do this, uh, that. So we're talking about only the standard areas, only about uh, standard points or primary points uh, for auscultation. In many cases, they are named by their numbers. So we, we, we can talk that, for instance, uh, there is decrease in S1 uh, uh, in the first point of auscultation, or for instance, there is loud S2 in uh, uh, third point of auscultation, and so on. In many cases, uh, the um, rank in the, the sequence of the auscultation it will be used at the name of the point. So the, in that case, sequence is extremely important. Well, the first point where you should well, put your phonendoscope uh, or stethoscope to is the apex. Uh, apical uh, point in many cases will be located by a palpation of the apex bit. Um, uh, by the way, if not, um, uh, if not, we'll just will position for the phonoscope uh, leftwards to the mid clavicular line in the fifth intercostal space, as usual. If you don't, well, see any exaggerated um, pulsation of the apex, it means that in your patient, uh, in your patient, uh, um, the uh, left ventricle is not hypertrophed and therefore the apex is located where it should be. It's located uh, uh, inwards from mid-clavicular line in field center space. Uh, second point uh, is uh, aortic point mm, uh, that's located well, just well right um, uh, from the sternal border in the second right interspace. Uh, um, uh, third point, uh, symmetrical point is located uh, in second interspace by the left border of sternum. Uh, So-called uh, lower left sternal border, uh, in many cases, is described as the base of the forward process. So typically in Russian literature, uh, in our textbook, uh, it's called base of the forward process or just well tricuspid focus. Uh, uh, and the uh, uh, extra one, uh, that is, we have well extra point, it's called accessory aortic or accessory pulmonic point. Uh, while it's necessary, I think we'll just we'll discuss. Well, once again, uh, we have the apical location, uh, fifth interspace where we can uh, assess the state of the mitral valve. Mm, uh, we have the, uh, the uh, second point that is aortic, second left interspace. Uh, the uh, pulmonic point is just well symmetrical to that by the uh, left border of the sternum. Uh, tricuspid is base of the forward process, uh, well, typically somewhat leftward 
uh, from the base of the Fourier process. Good. What about extra point? What about fifth point? Um, uh, once again, I'll uh, I ask that all of you will switch on your cameras because I think that most of you will uh, are either absent or well, lost somewhere in action. Uh, uh, good. Well, uh, once again, for extra point, if uh, uh, we'll draw a line from aorta, from aortic focus, back to the left ventricle, or from pulmonic focus uh, to the right ventricle, to the tricuspid point, uh, at the crossing of, of uh, those lines, or the backflow of blood uh, from aorta back to left ventricle, or from pulmonic artery back to right ventricle, to the tricuspid focus, you'll get that extra focus. It's called, uh, called Botkin area or accessory area. Uh, that area is necessary for revealing of the murmur, uh, murmur of regurgitation when blood will escape through, for instance, aortic valve, uh, when blood will escape uh, from pulmonic valve uh, uh, to me, the sir. respective. Yes? Sir, is it called ARBS area also? Uh, how it's called? ARBS area, E R B. Yes, 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 exactly. So uh, uh, it's called, uh, well, typically in Russian literature, it's called uh, Botkin uh, herb area or point of auscultation, E R B, exactly. Um, uh, so it's necessary to reveal the murmur of regurgitation or backflow of blood. Uh, uh, when it will flow uh, from a uh, uh, great artery back into the ventricle, it will create the uh, maximum intensity of the MMA here. Uh, uh, that area, by the way, will be the area of projection of all four uh, valves to the um, uh, surface of the anterior chest wall. And definitely it will be very inconvenient to auscultate um, uh, this area trying to differentiate, but fortunately for us, typically, the mitral valve uh, will be heard well, well down from the area of its uh, well, actual location uh, inside the chest, while aortic and pulmonic will be well, assessed well upwards, uh, tricuspid will again downwards. Therefore, we can use conduction of sounds, we can use conduction of memories uh, uh, for the sake of differentiation uh, of, for instance, left and right sided events and so on. Same will happen to the memories. Many cases, irradiation of the sound, irradiation of the memory will be helpful uh, and may be used for the diagnost uh, diagnostic purposes. That's real patient. Uh, the phonendoscope of the doctor is located uh, uh, in the mitral area. And then we're shifting from the mitral point, mitral area, well, uh, to the opposite side of the chest, to the second right into space. Don't forget that aorta goes first, well, rightwards, that bends into arc and goes down run, uh, downward uh, uh, by the left side, but deep inside of the chest, very deep. And therefore, if you wish to assess uh, threads of aorta, should go back uh, to the, the, the patient's back to the interscapular uh, space. And there you may get a uh, systolic memory, for instance, in the case of aortic stenosis. Good. So uh, next point is uh, aortic, then we go to the symmetrical point that will be the pulmonic area, down to the base of the Fourier process. It's nicely palpable here, just slightly left about. Uh, and uh, the Botkin up point will be assessed in the last um, uh, event, uh, uh, in the last sequence. So please remember that S1 will be assessed over the ventricles. It will be assessed uh, where it will be formed. Uh, over the muscles that will produce systole, that will produce S1, over the left ventricle mitral point and over the um, uh, right ventricle tricuspid point. This will be the areas of S1 uh, evaluation. Mm, uh, if we talk about assessment of the S2, that will be so-called base of the heart. Mm, so apex is down, uh, base is up, and uh, S2 will be assessed by uh, in the aortic and pulmonic areas. Here again, uh, definitely we always need to compare the intensity of, for instance, S2 between two points uh, to areas or S1 between mitral and tricuspid areas. Now uh, I'll try to, to switch on the, the, the um, audio. Please tell me or text me or just well 
shake your hands if you'll be able to, or, or you may vote using your emotions in, in Zoom, uh, uh, whether you'll be able to hear that auscultation record, because I can hear it. Can you hear? Yes. It's very weak, unfortunately. No, sir. Can you just will, will, uh, uh, increase the, the, the intensity of, of your um, of your loudspeakers? Can you hear? It? No, oh. I'm sorry, I can't hear you. Because I can see my microphone, uh, and it uh, demonstrates the total sound that, that my PC produces, uh, and it's it re reacts uh, to this recording. So it means that the sound is going away. Okay, uh, we'll try. I can to... hardly hear it. You cannot. I, can I can hardly hear it. it. Yes. Um, so it, so. maybe next time I'll just. Next will, time I'll just. Will, I'll try to amplify the sound and then and my just will audio recorder mm, uh, uh, to make it louder. Anyway, we'll try we'll, uh, to auscultate something now, and then maybe I'll repeat uh, uh, the, this record once again. By the way, some uh, uh, classical records are already posted uh, in Google Classroom. So may, you, you may download them, you may listen to them in Google Classroom. Uh, uh, not sure whether it's relatively free or not. Mm, uh, so they're definitely they're not for wide distribution, but you may use uh, those records that uh, you may find in uh, uh, Google Class. Google Classroom. Um, well, so for a uh, description of the events in the car, in, in the heart, sorry, uh, definitely we need to start from a uh, location of the changes in sounds and murmurs. So you need to start uh, indicating actually um, uh, where in which point, whether in the, the, the apex and the mitral focus in the other areas, uh, you got Uh, you got um, the changes in cardiac sound. Uh, then uh, uh, we need to assess uh, heart rate and rhythm. First of all, because it's important by itself, because we need to know whether the patient's having bradycardia, uh, whether the patient's having tachycardia. Uh, but second point is because a rate of, of the heart will significantly affect uh, the auscultatory presentation. So uh, even in absolutely healthy patient with absolutely normal heart, uh, there will be dramatic change in intensity, for instance, of S1, S2, uh, on the background of tachycardia or bradycardia. Therefore, sometimes uh, uh, it's recommended just well not to pay much attention to some symptoms that will be obtained on the background of tachycardia because it may obscure a lot of, of uh, changes, a lot of auscultatory data. Uh, sometimes just well artificially for the sake of auscultation, proper auscultation, uh, for the sake of proper, by the way, uh, echo CG, cardiac ultrasound, uh, you should induce uh, uh, normal cardio or bradycardia in your patient uh, by pharmacological means. So you'll be able to evaluate what's happening in the heart properly because if everything happens too, too rapidly, uh, even uh, if you can, well, uh, decrease the speed or recording the, the uh, echo CG, uh, that will not work and uh, some some changes may not be visualized uh, in your patient's heart. Rhythm. Regularity of heartbeats. Uh, um, first, uh, if a patient will have arrhythmia, will create the background for development of pulse deficiency, pulse deficit. Uh, second, again, uh, will create uh, the, the, the background for some changes in intensity uh, because uh, uh, the variation in heart rate will create variation, for instance, intensity of cardiac sounds. So therefore, that's important. And it's uh, not just about postulation of symptoms by themselves, but also important uh, uh, will indicate whether you and well, yeah, your colleagues may rely on the data that you describe or not, and the patient should be re-examined. Well, again, terminology. I'm sorry for the for, for, for that uh, frame. Uh, I have no idea how to remove that. Uh, uh, but let's talk about terms. Well, first heart sound is a systolic sound that produced by a lot of events. Uh, but first event indicated ventricular systole uh, will be the closure of AV valves. Mm, and that event, in many cases, will be one of the most 
uh, variative, uh, uh, changeable. Therefore, we need to pay attention to the uh, left um, sided, left ventricular component in S1. We just call it in many cases mitral component. That's not quite true. It's not only mitral. Uh, but uh, if we wish well, to say something about uh, left sided component, we, we typically will put down M1. Uh, and uh, uh, right sided, that, that we call tricuspid again. It's not always true because not everything is related to tricuspid valve. And don't forget that uh, we, we can have split S1 uh, when we can hear uh, um, left sided, right sided components as uh, separate sounds or almost as separate sounds. It will be some kind of a, well, um, a very, very, very narrow splitting. Uh, second hot sound again. Well, that is definitely related to shutting of the semilunar valves. Uh, and in that we can get uh, uh, aortic and pulmonic components. And obviously there may be split S2 uh, when uh, aortic pulmonic components will be heard as separate sounds. Um, again, unfortunately, it's not as simple uh, what is diastole, what is systole. A systole is something, some kind of phase uh, that will be uh, uh, heard, will be obtained um, after S1, before S2. Uh, diastole is a period of well, cardiac activity after S2, before next S1. Uh, third cardiac sound will occur uh, early in diastole, uh, very, very, very close to um, S2. Sometimes it's just well called well, echo of S2. Uh, and fourth cardiac sound. Uh, occurs late in diastole uh, before S1, and as uh, we decided, it's just a separated component of Professor. first cardiac sound. Yes? Yes, um, Can you please go back one slide? Yeah. Um, normally, uh, in normal cases, is splitting in S1 normal? Hmm. We'll talk about that uh, just well in, in, in an instance. Mm, well, well, we'll discuss well all, all those events in details, and, and uh, just okay. to give you a question uh, uh, for, for later discussion. Uh, uh, if there will be uh, still uh, some uh, some issues, something will not be clear. We'll discuss that once again. Uh, uh, that's for terminology. Uh, the term murmur may be used uh, for the cases uh, when uh, that's a murmur uh, when there will be prolonged vibration. Uh, that will be created within the heart. Uh, uh, if that will be uh, related to the artery, we'll call that root. Uh, if there will be turbulent jet of blood in the vein, we'll call that hum. Mm, uh, and there'll be a lot of other things, a lot of other sounds that may be uh, heard in the heart that may be systolic clicks. There may be sound of prosthetic valve uh, or maybe some, some extra cardiac sounds like pericardial friction rub or it may be uh, pericardial click. Again, very briefly, um, uh, we can uh, uh, discuss some changes in cardiac sounds. Mm, uh, uh, first cardiac sound may be accentuated, for instance, in mitral stenosis due to various reasons, and uh, uh, abrupt closure of mitral valve is not the most important. So uh, uh, that's a very important question mark here. Uh, in the systole, there may be some ejection clicks. Uh, that is important. So there may be early uh, uh, ejection click uh, that will be heard in absolutely or well, generally healthy adult uh, uh, or well, rather elderly patients. Uh, that will be related to a aortic uh, sclerosis, not stenosis. Uh, it will be associated to atherosclerosis of aortic valve. Uh, and in that case, there may be some uh, slight delay in an opening of semilunar lunar valves. Uh, there may be uh, some uh, changes uh, of the elasticity of the aortic or maybe pulmonic valve. And we'll call that uh, a sclerosis, not stenosis. Uh, definitely stenosis may be associated with sclerosis. Uh, but uh, please remember that uh, we can have absolutely healthy or well, almost healthy with just well normal age-related atherosclerosis patient uh, with that ejection click, and it means nothing but that your patient is elderly. Uh, I mean, historically, uh, 
uh, almost exclusively is related to mitral valve prolapse. We'll talk about it uh, uh, once again later today and in the class devoted to mitral disease. Uh, second heart sound may be accentuated. Uh, uh, it's a nice marker uh, of uh, pulmonary hypertension, obviously, at the um, pulmonic artery, and uh, uh, it may be the marker of systemic hypertension if there will be higher pressure in uh, aorta. If it will be split, again, it depends. It's quite a common event, and we'll discuss a lot uh, of issues related to splitting of S2 besides S1. Uh, in diastole, patient may develop opening snap. That would be the, the sound indicating mitral stenosis. And it's a very important marker. Uh, and sounds that we already discussed, that is the third and fourth cardiac sounds uh, that we already mentioned. Uh, well, uh, now, um, once again, uh, well, I tried just well, uh, to play the recording to you. Uh, uh, please excuse me for well, some kind of misadaptation uh, uh, of um, uh, uh, well, the, the intensity of the, the recording. I'll try to just well, to um, replay them once again at the next class on Saturday uh, when we'll discuss cardiac memories. Um, good, so that will be the, um, uh, the, the, the sound of mitral stenosis. It was uh, loud uh, um, S1. Um, uh, recording was at the apex, and at the apex we don't assess S2. As, as, as that is normal. S1 is louder. Can, uh, well, uh, I think, uh, as far as I understand, at least somebody can hear it. So uh, I'll try to play, but I will uh, try to well, replay once again. Uh, with the high amplitude. Next class, and uh, uh, well, we'll post some auscultatory files, uh, files with auscultation at the Google class. So I'll play it once again for those who can hear me, and we'll try to turn back to that once again. It is uh, was tachycardia. Uh, uh, um, very short diastoles, and due to uh, low feeling of ventricles, in that case, sorry, uh, in that case, a uh, patient will develop all S1s uh, uh, much louder than in a healthy patient. They will be very loud, mm, uh, but it may be event sometimes in patient that will develop tachycardia not due to paroxysmal attack, but as a result of uh, um, severe physical activity or emotional stress. Uh, good. So accentuated S1 uh, will be seen in a patient with uh, uh, tachycardia. It may be seen in uh, so-called high cardiac output states, for instance, uh, absolutely healthy patient after physical exercise, uh, patient with anemia, uh, patient with uh, thyrotoxicosis, hypothyroidism. The classical situation definitely is mitral stenosis. That will be so-called cannonball S1, uh, extremely loud. Uh, or sometimes it may be uh, due to extrasystoles uh, when um, uh, the mitral valve will be very widely opened. And uh, um, at that moment of time, um, ventricles will start to contract due to extrasystole, due to well, premature activation. In that case, again, there will be a single but very loud. Again, it's called cannonball S1 in that case, but that will be of arrhythmic origin, not of uh, um, uh, due to valvular heart disease. Decreased is one. Again, for those who can hear me, uh, well, I'll try to play. Uh, uh, that will be the normal recording. Uh, no, it's not like that. Um, uh, that is normal. And uh, that is weaker. So S1 is even uh, weaker than S2. Um, so low intensity of S1 may develop in a patient uh, uh, due to different 
uh, disorders that may be, uh, first of all, severe affection of the heart muscle. So in many cases, uh, when you deal with the patient with acquired low intensity of S1, we think, first of all, about uh, some kind of heart failures. Mm, it may be in the background of myocarditis, it may be the result of uh, myocardial infarction. Uh, um, so that may be the most common and most uh, clinically significant cause for development of low intensity of S1. Uh, low intensity of S1 may be seen in patient with regurgitation, so to say, uh, uh, in mitral competence, in aortic incompetence, patient again will have very low intensity of S1, very weak S1. And uh, uh, sometimes first degree heart block, uh, delayed conduction may result in, in a very uh, weak um, sound of, uh, of, of, of first heart sound. Varying. I told you that uh, intensity of S1 will depend upon the feeling. Uh, uh, that will be again due to uh, due to um, a muscular component. The more blood will be inside uh, the, the left ventricle, right ventricle, the smoother will be contraction. Therefore, if there will be a longer uh, uh, diastole, there will be weaker S1 after that longer diastole. If there will be shorter diastole. S1 will go up. Therefore, it's typical, for instance, for patients with extrasystoles. Again, I'll try well to play the the the, the, uh, um, the recording. If you'll fail to hear me, no offense. Uh, I'll try to replay it once again. Yes, extrasystole was louder. Yes. Uh, just because uh, uh, it's premature activation and uh, it develops after shorter uh, diastole. In atrial fibrillation, in atrial fibrillation, uh, there'll be all pauses different. The shorter the pause, shorter diastole, the louder the S1 after that. Uh, okay, uh, well, uh, for sorry, uh, uh, for split is one. I promised to you to uh, to discuss uh, uh, what will happen uh, and why this might happen. First of all, it may be uh, just well a generally healthy patient, and uh, over the base of the Ford process. Uh, uh, over tricuspid area in the, the lower left sternal border, there may be normal splitting of S1 due to minor synchrony between uh, uh, two cavities of the heart. Well, I told you that uh, we are talking about actually two uh, quite independent pumps, uh, about uh, uh, pumps that uh, typically are more or less synchronized, but that's not always true. Uh, and therefore, if uh, uh, there will be some kind of overload uh, of right cavities that will function on the background of a lower pressure generally, in that case, um, uh, there may be even more significant delay uh, in activity of uh, um, right cavities, and there may be obvious uh, splitting, and uh, uh, M1 will develop earlier, uh, uh, T1 will develop later. Uh, that's for a healthy patient, uh, and by the way, please pay attention that it may not be audible uh, over the apex of the heart, over the mitral area. Uh, the tricuspid component is very soft. It's very weak in, in all meanings, sorry, uh, of that term. And uh, uh, due to that, it may be, uh, there may be audible splitting of S1 uh, over the uh, tricuspid area, uh, but uh, because it will be not audible T1, over the apex, you'll hear only M1, only left-sided component, and therefore you'll hear no splitting uh, over the apex, while splitting may be obvious, definitely during the, the inspiratory phase um, uh, at the base of the foot. Uh, abnormal splitting definitely will be the result of even uh, 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 more significant delay of the right side um, uh, of the heart. It, it may happen in patient with the right bundle branch block, RBBB, uh, sometimes in premature ventricular contractions. Good. 
uh, accentuated as two is the marker of hypertension. Um, if you talk about uh, patient, it is loudest one uh, over water. not as loud over the pulmonary artery. Sorry for that. Uh, so point is that uh, you have to compare. Uh, you have to compare, uh, can you hear me? Yes. I cannot, I cannot hear myself. Good. Yes. Good. Uh, so um, the point is that uh, over the base of the heart, uh, S2 is always louder uh, than S1. So uh, uh, if uh, S2 will be louder than S1, it, it means nothing. You need to compare, for instance, uh, uh, as in that case, in systemic hypertension, you need to compare uh, uh, aorta to um, the pulmonary artery and assess the degree of the difference. How loud is um, S2 in comparison to S1 over aorta, and how loud it is in comparison to S2 over um, a symmetrical point? Uh, if, you, if you'll be able to find out that it's much more louder than over the other area, it means that something is going abnormal. Either uh, that is one is decreased, or this is, uh, sorry, uh, S2 is decreased, or this S2 is increased. Always compare left to the right. Uh, uh, what to use uh, as a ethylone? Uh, it depends upon your, your experience and it depends upon the uh, certain patient uh, because definitely you have to, 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 to have any appreciation about how normal sound of the heart should, uh, should look like. Uh, physiological splitting of a stool is uh, um, happen in absolutely healthy people. And the point is that, again, it's related to uh, lower pressure that uh, right carriage of the heart will function um, uh, in. Uh, and in that case, uh, during expiratory phase, there should be no splitting, there should be single S2. But if you ask patient to breathe in, uh, that will bring much more blood uh, to the right ventricle, to the right atrium, and there will be overload. Uh, of uh, right ventricle by the blood. In that case, there may be quite significant delay so that we'll be able to hear separately uh, P2 from A2. So if the splitting will happen only in the inspiration, if the general intensity of heart sounds is normal, uh, it means that uh, we're talking about physiological splitting uh, of heart sounds. Please once again remember uh, that uh, heart sounds is the most important marker of disease. So if you have a patient with normal intensity of S1, S2, uh, over the all four points of, of auscultation, standard points of auscultation, not talking about uh, Botkin's point because it's point for, for the murmur. Uh, uh, if uh, sounds are normal, it means that most likely you are dealing with a patient with some functional disorders. If not, uh, then definitely you need to, to look much more precisely uh, to uh, what's happening uh, to the patient's heart and look for the other changes uh, in, in sounds and memos. Somebody's decided to join us. Good. Uh, okay. Uh, normal splitting of a stool is shown here. It's not quite, uh, quite visible, uh, quite nicely seen. Uh, but if you'll pay attention to uh, the shape of a stew, you may see some, well, uh, more or less significant difference, for instance, like in between these two recordings. Mm, uh, looks like uh, that was expiratory phase, and uh, that is inspiratory phase in, in our patient. So there is a wider splitting of the components of a stew during that moment. Um, Sorry, I need to, to let somebody in. 
splitting, uh, pathological splitting of um, uh, S2 may be so-called white, uh, that will uh, occur both in inspiratory and expiratory phase. And um, a delete closure of the pulmonic valve may be in a patient with uh, RBBB, maybe in patient with pulmonic stenosis. Uh, sometimes it may be seen in patient with mitral regurgitation uh, with the overload of the lesser circular circulation. And again, that will uh, result in development of pulmonic hypertension. Please remember that uh, there may be so-called fixed splitting of a stew. Uh, uh, it's very important marker of unfortunately rare events. Patient may have uh, atrial septal defect, um, ventricle septal defect, sometimes uh, in the case of um, a patent ductus arteriosus. Uh, a patient may have fixed splitting, but mostly in uh, uh, um, atrial septal defect. It's by, by the way, is extremely common. Uh, many people will live with uh, atrial septal, septal defect, not knowing about that, just because normally in many, again, healthy people, uh, there is no just well uh, closed septum between right and left uh, atrium. Uh, there is a kind of a valve. So uh, that may be uh, the, 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 the foram navale, uh, that is not uh, completely blocked, but there is a fold of the endocardium uh, that is uh, uh, located mostly on the left side. At the left side, that will be the left atrium. Uh, pressure is high, and the right atrium pressure is lower, and therefore high pressure uh, in the left atrium will press uh, that fold of endocardium rightwards, and therefore shut completely, almost hematically. Uh, uh, the, the, the foramen ovale. Um, uh, but in some cases, if pressure in right case of the heart will be elevated, in that case, uh, pressures will be more or less equal, and there may be more or less significant uh, well uh, communication between atria uh, or sometimes uh, um, overload of uh, this or that side of, of, of the heart or the atria. Good. Uh, so talking about, uh, yes, can this be a congenital defect? Yes, inborn. Mm -hmm. Not sure that it's congenital, but it's inborn defect. And again, uh, many of us will have, uh, well, not completely closed foramen navale, and uh, will have no idea about that. Even echo CG will not always show that, uh, uh, because from the functional point of view, that fold uh, of, of the endocardium uh, will completely isolate normally normal left atrium from normal uh, right atrium. Uh, and uh, no one will know that unless, for instance, somebody will decide it to carry out catheterization. Uh, and in that case, for instance, uh, if you wish to measure the blood pressure in uh, 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 right sides of the heart, uh, you through, for instance, uh, superior or inferior vena cover will insert the catheter uh, uh, and decided that, uh, well, uh, let's say you don't wish to measure pressure only here, you're interested in left atrium or left cavities of the heart, uh, you may just well, push and get without any well, damage to the septum because there is none. Uh, uh, you will just well, press into uh, the lumen of the, the, the left atrium, of that valve that will be here. And uh, there'll be no need to, well, to puncture anything. You'll just will press and then enter uh, from uh, right atrium uh, to the left edge. That's how it may be found out. Um, well, so fixed splitting may be the marker of uh, uh, um, issues with the atrial or ventricular septum. And in that case, if patient will breathe in on one hand, that will increase, uh, uh, increase the volume of the blood in the right cavities of the heart. On the other hand, that increase and extra amount of blood in the right uh, uh, atrium will increase the pressure. And uh, due to that, during the inspiratory phase, there will be on one hand, well, uh, uh, some kind of volume overload of uh, right cavities, but on the other hand, increase in pressure that will uh, equalize events in the right and in the left heart. Therefore, in those patients with septal defects, there will be fixed splitting absolutely unaffected by phases of breathing. 
And uh, definitely there may be paradoxical splitting when uh, uh, if patient will breathe in. Uh, in that case, uh, um, uh, there will be uh, disappearing of, uh, or, or decreased degree of splitting. So uh, in those patients, expiration, uh, not inspiration, will result in splitting or in uh, aggravation of splitting. It means that there is delay of left cavities of the heart in comparison to right cavities. A patient may have myocardial infarction, myocarditis, and so on. Uh, there is uh, some messages in, in the chart. Uh, yes, don't forget to uh, fill down the, the, the attendance uh, uh, form in the Google disk. Good. Okay, um, pathological splitting of S2 means that it will, will uh, persist both in expiratory and inspiratory phases uh, and typically will just aggravate during inspiration. We discussed a lot of that. Uh, ejection sound. Uh, there may be two types of extra sounds in this systole. First is uh, early systolic ejection sound, ejection click, mm, that may be heard in patients with aortic sclerosis. Sometimes a patient may have uh, a, 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 a dilation of aorta. Sometimes it may be a congenital stenosis, sometimes because with 12, but most common cause for that uh, will be just well, age-related uh, uh, sclerosis of aorta. Sometimes uh, same mechanisms may, uh, may result in the right side of the heart. Patient may develop pulmonary hypertension. Patient may develop uh, pulmonic stenosis. But again, please be sure that sometimes it may be absolutely healthy patient. And uh, at the quality of the sound, um, it will be high in pitch. And therefore, don't forget uh, why do we have uh, the diaphragm in your uh, well, device. Actually, if uh, the device will have diaphragm, it will not be called uh, stethoscope, it will be called phonendoscope. But you may switch from stethoscope to phonendoscope. And uh, um, uh, if there will be significant increase intensity of the sound, it means that it's high in pitch. It's a very nice trick. How to do you, you may be able to differentiate high from low pitch events. Uh, that is mid-systolic click. Click of the mitral valve prolapse, and it will uh, occur later in the systole, somewhere in the mid of systole. I told you that the pressure will go up and it will reach its climax at the middle of the systole in the ventricle, like left ventricle, and in the aorta. So uh, due to uh, a peak of pressure in the middle of, of, of the systole, the mitral valve may not well keep um, so that is the, the atrium, mitral valve, uh, uh, and the ventricle. So uh, if there will be too high pressure, the mitral valve may uh, deform somewhat and uh, let some amount of blood to escape uh, into the atrium. Uh, sometimes it may be the issue of coda tendinia. Uh, sometimes it may be the, the, the issue of uh, uh, papillary muscles that will be attached to, to the, to the cords of mitral valve. Actually, there is two explanations for development of uh, mid-systolic leak. is either the sound of the cusp, or it may be the sound of vibration of the uh, cord, cord tendinia. Very common sign, uh, uh, it may be found in about 5% well, uh, of healthy adults, uh, uh, mostly women than men. Uh, uh, again, it's, it's a high pitch sound, therefore better heard with the diaphragm, with the membrane. Uh, it, in many cases, it may be the mark of just well, some functional disease, disease of rather nervous system within the heart. Uh, that is a mid systolic click, uh, uh, absolutely normal S1 at the apex, that is uh, the phonocardiogram at the apex, recording the low frequencies, uh, medium frequencies. Mm, uh, we don't, we should not assess uh, S2 at the apex. We have for that aortic and pulmonic areas, and very, very loud heard both, both at Medium and low frequencies, mid systolic click. Here it is. Uh, that is, by the way, uh, the recording uh, uh, of the, the carotid artery. There is a slide, but visible if you recall that uh, technically uh, a delay uh, in carotid pulse in comparison to S1. Uh, but there will be dramatic delay uh, um, over the radial artery that will make radial pulse unusable. Uh, for evaluation of S1 or uh, S2. 
Uh, and this one will uh, will uh, appear as to be uh, uh, in turn slightly in comparison to QRS complex at the ECG. Opening snap. Opening snap is the sound that will develop uh, uh, after S2 in quite a short time. So uh, please remember that uh, S2 is relaxation of uh, ventricles, it's shutting uh, of aortic valve. Uh, ventricle will relax very rapidly and that is the moment of the opening of atria. Uh, at that moment of time, uh, patient, if there will be a very high pressure gradient across mitral valve, uh, will develop opening snap, so, so sharp opening of, of, of the uh, valve and uh, um, a very rapid flow of the blood from atrium to ventricle under the high pressure gradient. So uh, uh, if you'll be in doubt, what do you hear after S2? Whether it's third cardiac sound, maybe something else, or whether it's opening snap, uh, please record the PCG. And at the PCG, this should be 0 0.06 to uh, 0.010, sometimes 12 uh, milliseconds. Mm, a distance uh, um, uh, after S2 up to opening snap. If the sound will fit into that uh, interval up to uh, 12 milliseconds, that is the opening snap. If it will occur later, that is the third cardiac sound. So once again, we can hear, by the way, let me try to, to, to play uh, uh, that, that sound. Maybe somebody will be still able uh, to listen to that. It's very loud, this one. And opening snap after that, followed by the memory. Good. Well, that is a PCG in mitral stenosis. What you can see here is Mm, the is the loudest one. Again, we should not pay attention to S2 because it's uh, uh, because it's uh, Apex. Two decordians for two audio filters, filters lower and medium frequencies. Uh, opening snap. Here it is, nicely visible at medium and uh, uh, low frequencies. And again, here it is, uh, here it is. Uh, and please pay attention that the murmur, here you can see the turbulence, mm, uh, that murmur will develop uh, uh, only after the opening snap. It's, I think it's, it's quite obvious uh, that uh, before mitral valve will open, you can be uh, unable to get any murmur because the mitral valve is shut. Good. Uh, well, uh, somebody is constantly entering. Good. Well, that is the third cardiac sound. As I told you, within uh, first 12 milliseconds after S2, a patient may develop uh, opening snap, but if it will be later uh, than 12 milliseconds, up to 18 milliseconds, uh, you are having third cardiac sound in your patient. Again, please remember that there may be physiological uh, S3 uh, in children, uh, in adolescents, in sportsmen, so in those well, generally healthy people in whom there will be some kind of um, discoordination between amount of blood and uh, uh, the ability of left, sometimes right ventricle to receive that blood. Therefore, most commonly, uh, S3 will be heard over the uh, mitral area, over the left cavities, and sometimes it may be normal, it may be physiological. Uh, that is a uh, low for frequency sound, and therefore, you should use bell, you should use stethoscope without membrane, without diaphragm. And please pay attention that it should be used with the light pressure, because if you'll press too strongly, uh, you'll turn patient's skin under your Oscilloscope uh, bell into membrane. Uh, uh, and uh, uh, as the membrane of the phonendoscope, as the diaphragm, it will also amplify high, high pitch sounds. So we should apply oscilloscope um, with the light pressure. Uh, what may be the causes of pathological uh, third cardiac sound? As we already discussed, it may be severely decreased myocardial contractility, 
it's the most common, maybe most dangerous situation, maybe a chronic myocardial failure. Uh, and please pay attention uh, uh, that it may be due to volume overload. Uh, it's commonly forgotten. Uh, we need to discuss that maybe I think in a week or two when we'll talk about um, uh, valvular heart diseases, we'll talk about martial incompetence, when we'll talk about aortic incompetence. Uh, in those patients uh, with uh, volume overload due to valvular heart disease, uh, absolutely normal uh, myocardial contractility will be accompanied by a presence of third cardiac sound just due to hemodynamic issues, due to uh, uh, discrepancy, due to some, some issues with uh, uh, contractility. Uh, good. Fourth cardiac sound, uh, sound uh, of separation uh, of uh, atrial component away from S1. Why this may happen? Because of prolonged atrial systole. Uh, uh, the sound uh, typically will be low in pitch, so you should use, uh, um, should use a stethoscope for that, you should use the bell. Um, and uh, uh, in that case, again, we, we, we can say that sometimes a patient may have uh, physiological S4 in trained athletes and in elderly patients. Uh, and pathological will uh, mean uh, um, some delay in, in uh, emptying of atria. Uh, um, the most common and important situation from the point of view of diagnosing the cardiac issues uh, will be the increased resistance of ventricular uh, uh, myocardium to feeding of, of by blood from atria. A high stiffness, so you can imagine that uh, your patient uh, may have a myocardial disease that will be associated that will be associated uh, to stiffness of myocardium, or will be associated to sclerosing of endocardium. Uh, it will be impaired uh, well competence of, of myocardium to be filled uh, from left atrium. Uh, uh, it will be more or less normal during the passive filling uh, of, uh, at the beginning of diastole. By the end of uh, uh, ventricular diastole is atrial systole. Left atrium will try to uh, contract, but uh, ventricle is very stiff. It's very firm. Uh, and it's unable to normally receive extra amount of blood uh, um, uh, from, uh, uh, from atrium. And in that case, definitely there will be uh, a much longer duration of systole of atrium and fourth heart sound will separate. That's called uh, diastolic dysfunction, either inability of uh, uh, ventricle, typically left ventricle, uh, to relax properly. Uh, good. Well, sometimes it may happen uh, with the right side of the heart. Uh, it may happen in patients with pulmonary hypertension, with uh, pulmonary stenosis. And sometimes it may be just associated to impaired conduction. Uh, gallop rhythm. Uh, what I told you about uh, fourth and third cardiac sounds uh, was called gallop rhythm. If patient will have Somebody decided to end our class a couple of minutes ago before the, 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 the uh, ending. If patient will have first, so sorry, uh, S1, uh, S2, and for instance, S4, that will be the gallop rhythm. Please remember that uh, um, those names are names, not numbers of sounds. Uh, after uh, S2, patient may have S3, but sometimes without a three, patient may just have uh, only S4. Uh, if there will be both normal two heart sounds, S1, S2, S3, and S4, that will be called uh, um, a quadruple rhythm. That may be seen in patients with severe myocardial dysfunction, where there will be both decreased contractility and decreased diastolic function. Uh, uh, but sometimes uh, third cardiac sound uh, may emerge to fourth cardiac sound and that sound is called well if you will summarize three plus four uh, it's called uh, s7 a summation gallop rhythm uh, typically that happens in patients with tachycardia when when uh, so-called passive filling will occur well soon before contraction of atria 
And in that case, it will be fusion of third and fourth cardiac sounds. And sometimes it may happen in patients with uh, fluid overload state, for instance, if you infuse too much fluid to your patient. Mm, uh, in that case, there may be again summation gallop with so called uh, seventh uh, cardiac sound, but well, actually, it's rather a joke than the official term. Uh, uh, gallop rhythm. Uh, here, do we have a very low intensity of a swan? Please pay attention that is a significant decrease in the swan at the apex. Patients have an systolic murmur. Mm, S2, that is third cardiac sound, fourth cardiac sound before next S1. So that is a summation uh, gulp, in, uh, sorry, not summation, but it's quadruple rhythm in the patient with myocardial disease. Uh, pericardial knock, that is the early mid diastolic sound. Um, something like a click that will be heard due to constrictive pericarditis. And that may be confirmed definitely by echo CG, by a cardiac ultrasound. Uh, that may be confirmed by CT scan, sometimes by MRI. Um, constrictive pericarditis may be uh, idiopathic, and that is really a headache uh, for clinicians because 60% of patients with uh, pericardial constrictive pericarditis will have uh, uncertain and proven cause. Uh, if it will be proven again, that will be a headache maybe even more because it may be due to TBC, due to tuberculosis. And please believe me that uh, typically it's not localized to pericardium. It, it, it's systemic disease with affection of patient's lungs. Uh, it may be destructive, it may be with, with production of bacteria. Mm, so again, it's very severe disease and it's difficult to manage disease. Sometimes it may happen due to mediastinal radiation, patients uh, after radiation therapy, or it's, it may be obvious that patient may develop that after cardiac surgery. Uh, treatment is suggestible dissection, removal of pericardium, uh, but point is that by pericardiectomy we will not well, heal patients to be closest or well, any other underlying disease. Uh, good, so that's all for today. Uh, uh, here you can see the topic of the next class that will be held uh, on Saturday at 1 p.m. Definitely, if there will be no objections, if there will be no overlap with other classes, if there will be, please text me in the chat well, now during this class, um, or you may well use Google Class system, well, uh, as, uh, some feedback. Once again, I would like to ask all of you to use the web page, the portal, or the section of university. I have a special uh, page devoted to our department, general disease therapeutics. Mm, uh, uh, if there are any issues, I may just once again post uh, the address, how to reach um, uh, lecture section, uh, uh, seminar section, class section uh, uh, in the web page of university. Yes, yes, Min. Uh, uh, Yes. Uh, professor, excuse me, if I have any question from the lesson, uh, how I can connect with you to ask my questions? You may do it now. Uh, not from this lesson. I have question from previous lesson. It's possible now. Yes, you may text me in a Google class. I think there is a system okay. of messages. Oh, um, okay. uh, there is, um, uh, well, the, the front page of the Google class. You can text a comment. Okay. Uh, uh, so you may use that system uh, as a feedback, well, as a comment in the Google, Google class, well, it may be devoted to uh, any certain topic of the class, or it may be just, well, comment to any of my news. Uh, but once again, mm, I'll ask all of you to use official web page, because that is a system of, well, um, uh, getting information from departments, from the students. Mm, you need to demonstrate your activity, activity in the web portal. Um, don't forget to uh, fill down the form of attendance. I'll, I'll send it to all your teachers. Uh, at the end of today's session, uh, I'll make it uh, unavailable for, for editing. Mm, but uh, um, you may use it and uh, well, it, it will be copied into your well, printed journals of attendance. Good. Any other questions? Yes, Mindy, you're still raising your hand. A any other questions? Uh, or Good. Okay. Well, uh, fine. So if you have no other questions, uh, then I think that will be all for today.
Thank you, Professor. It was nice seeing all of you. Uh, you. Uh, and uh, see you once again. Um, well, it will be on Saturday uh, when we'll talk about Memories of the Heart. Thank you. Bye. Bye, sir. Bye. Bye. Goodbye. Sorry? Uh, this, uh, well, uh, these or similar questions will be used for the uh, MCQs uh, uh, that will be um, will given to you uh, by the computer system of our university. Um, so please pay attention to them because uh, you may meet similar questions uh, at your exam, uh, the, the portion of exam that will be carried out by the PC. Uh, sorry? Yes, uh, the results will be sent. Actually, all your teachers will have access to the Google Class. Mm, uh, but now we were forced to shift to the web page of, of university. So therefore, we, we will try well, to, to shift from one platform to another. How it will be done, actually, I have no idea by now. But mm, please don't be surprised if there will be new uh, messages with, with tests, with, with some tasks, maybe clinical cases uh, at the web page of university. I'll, but for the first time, I will duplicate them in the Google Classroom. But later on, uh, well, we have well, to shift to the uh, web page of a session of university. Well, there will be actually no choice for us. For now, uh, all your results, all the data of your tests, uh, of your MCQs uh, will be shared definitely with the teachers. Sir, can I ask a question? Yes. Uh, from where we can download this class? Well, uh, first, uh, again, uh, uh, for now, um, well, we have both web page of uh, University and Google Class. Uh, I'll post links uh, to, to recordings of our classes in both cases and in both places uh, in the Google Classroom, and there will be a link in the web page of University. DL.sectionof.ru. Um, uh, what will happen well, when it will be out of disk space because for now I'm recording to my well, own PC and uh, when it will be overloaded, I have no idea, but for now you may well, up, well, up, 